This is part 3A of a presentation on restoring water quality in Canisius and Honeyoid Lakes. This part will focus on the data, reports, and water quality for Canisius Lake. A similar discussion for Honeyoid Lake is part 3B of this presentation. The representation of land use is an important part of the watershed model. This map shows the land use in Canisius Lake watershed as just determined by the 2006 National Land Cover Database. It shows a mix of land uses. The green shades are different types of forest and grass covers, and it makes up about 43% of the watershed. Pasture and hay makes up another 28% of the land use, shown in the map in yellow. In brown are the cultivated or row crops, which make up another 13% of the land use. Developed land is in the pinks and reds, and they make up about 6% of the land use. These show us some of the more developed areas in the villages and along the lakeshore, and some of the roads. Wetlands and open water make up the remaining 10% of the watershed. At the south end of the lake is the New York State Wildlife Management Area. Some of the lands are showing up as agricultural. We are working with our Region 8 office to reclassify those lands to better reflect how they're actually used. So there are many years of monitoring data for the lake. Some of the common measures of water quality which are collected are shown here. Total phosphorus is commonly measured, particularly at the lake surface. The Secchi disk is the black and white disk shown in the picture in the upper right. It's used to measure water clarity. Chlorophyll A gives us a measure of how green the water is. And finally, we have dissolved oxygen measurements through the water column, which when used to identify if and when low dissolved oxygen occurs in the lake. Shown here are summer average total phosphorus concentrations in the surface waters of Canisius Lake. We have data going back to 1985 with the most recent measurements we have uh, collected in 2012. It's difficult to tell if there's a trend to the data or if what we're seeing is just year-to-year -year variability. Generally, we're seeing concentrations in the 20 to 25 microgram per liter range. So, similarly, these are summer average chlorophyll A measurements, again from the surface waters. Perhaps there's uh, some trends here, but again year-to-year -year variability is important. So this slide shows the Secchi disk measurements. These measurements are made by lowering the Secchi disk into the water column until it disappears. Typically these are shown with zero representing the surface, the water surface, and then the bars depicting how deep into the lake the disk is still visible. A large value means clearer water. It appears perhaps that the Secchi disk has been steady since the late 1980s. So this slide shows just a few dissolved oxygen profiles from 2012. Similar to the last plot, zero is the lake surface and then the measurements are taken down, going down into the lake. So in May, we see a well oxygen, oxygen, oxygenated upper waters of the lake, but down towards the bottom, the dissolved oxygen is around 5 milligrams per liter, and that's shown in the blue line. As we move, from, uh, move through from June in red to July in purple, we see the dissolved oxygen dropping to zero in the bottom of the lake. And by August, shown in orange, there is no dissolved oxygen in the lower 15 or so meters of the lake. We've already gathered a number of data sets and reports to support this work. There are several Department of Environmental Conservation sampling results from our Lake Classification Inventory Program, from our fisheries group, and some special studies. We also have some data from our volunteer-run Citizen Statewide Lake Assessment Program, or CSLAP. We have two reports from uh, Professor Joe McCurwitz from his 2009 and 2012 sampling. We have about 11 years of the Canisius Lake and watershed report cards. We're also looking closely at the 2003 Watershed Management Plan and the 2013 Watershed Characterization Report. There's also been extensive work already completed in the watershed. Um, these include sewer extensions, reviewing and amending of the local zoning regulations, public education campaigns, nearly $2 million of best management practices that have been installed, and road ditch improvements. And of course, there's the continued monitoring of the lake water quality.
So that sums up where we're at with this process and the data we are currently working with. An important part of this process is to reach out to you, the stakeholders, to get your feedback. So we, we would like to know how you use the lake. What do you think the water quality problems are? Are there some areas of the lake which are worse than others? Is there any additional information you think that we should have? And would you make any corrections to the information that we've just shown here? So to help us gather that feedback, we've put together a short survey. The link is shown, the link is shown on the screen here. You can also contact me directly. I provided my contact information on this slide as well. So thank you for watching this presentation. We hope that you found it informative, and pe please feel free to contact us with any questions or comments.